Uh, hi, Mr. Shapiro. Um, thank you for coming. I'm a big fan, and I agree with you on most things, but there's one topic that I want to hear you talk more about. Um, my question pertains to firearm policy in the United States versus Australia. Mm -hmm. Between 1995 and 1996, directly before and after the gun buyback in Australia, there was a 36% drop in deaths caused by gunshot wounds, and that's the sharpest decline in gun-related deaths between 1989 and 2014 in Australia. Um, between 2001 and 2002, before and after the trafficking handgun agreements in Australia, the general homicide rate, not even specific to firearms, dropped by 17%, which was also the sharpest dro drop in homicides between 1989 and 2014 in Australia. Um, comparing Australia to the United States, between 2001 and 2014, there was a 44% decline in the rate of homicides in Australia, compared to only a 19% decline in America. Um, given these facts, do you believe that pol um, policies similar to those enacted in Australia, specifically um, the, the, guy back, the gun buyback and the national with the National Firearm Agreement, as well as the trafficking handgun agreements, do you think that similar policies in America would help reduce gun violence? Uh, so I don't think that a gun confiscation policy or a gun buyback program like Australia's would be effective. First of all, important to note that the, that it's unclear how much of the, the reduction in gun violence in Australia was actually due to the gun buyback. And the reason I say that is because only one third of the guns that were actually bought back were bought back, meaning that two thirds of the guns remain in circulation in Australia and remain in the homes of the people there. So the gun buyback was not responsible for a 100% reduction of the number of guns in circulation. It was responsible for a 33% reduction in the number of guns in circulation. Second of all, um, I'd actually want to see the statistics, because you're speaking verbally, I'd like to see the statistics that you're talking about because the statistics that I have seen is that between 1994 and 2015, the decline in gun homicide rate in the United States is, was actually about the same as it was in Australia without us actually engaging in the same policy. Uh, and in fact, there's a good article at the Washington Post, um, the woman's name escapes me, uh, as a woman who used to work for 538, I think her name was Labrescu, Leia Labrescu. Uh, and she, she writes an entire piece specifically about the UK and Australia and contrasting their gun policy with the United States and explaining why this is not particularly apt as a comparison. Um, and it isn't. I mean, the fact is that America's, gun, uh, America's homicide rate, our, our gun violence rate, has gone down massively since 1994, despite the increase of the number of weapons in circulation tremendously during that same period. Right? We've actually increased between 1994 and now from, I think it's 250 million guns in circulation, about 400 million guns in the United States in circulation right now. At the same time, the gun violence rate has declined markedly. Also, when I see these statistics, very often what people tend to do is lump in suicide with homicide. So I'd, I'd, I, this is why I'm, I'm questioning the stats just because I have different stats, but if you want to send me, them to me, I'm happy to have an email exchange about them because I'm curious. I mean, I, I like more information. Um, but what people tend to do when it comes to this sort of stuff is attribute sharp drops in homicide, which they include sometimes suicide in homicide, uh, to the lack of guns. Well, if you want to shoot yourself, then this actually brings up a, a general question. Is, is it my job to remove a gun from you if you want to shoot yourself? I mean, you want to shoot yourself. Like, you could stab yourself. You could hang yourself. And Japan has fairly high suicide rates in certain places. They have virtually no guns in that society. So um, suicide is something we don't quite understand well on a social science level.